Greetings and good health. I am Dr. Jerrica Sarko, a pediatric and family wellness chiropractor. This is your Lifeline to Vitality, where we discuss ways to cultivate family wellness. Good day and great health. Welcome back to another edition of your Lifeline to Vitality. Today on the podcast, baby can't latch, tongue tie, or could it be something else? While I am not an expert in analyzing or diagnosing tongue ties, the truth is very few healthcare practitioners are. For example, not all lactation consultants know how to properly assess for tongue ties. Furthermore, not all physicians, dentists, or speech-language pathologists have training in analyzing and diagnosing tongue ties as well. While tongue ties have been observed for over 2,000 years, their possible link to latching problems is fairly recent. One fact is known. Tongue ties are congenital anomalies. An important study, Tongue Tie in the Newborn, What, When, Who, and How?, Exploring Tongue Tie Divisions, out of Australia by Dr. David Todd, shows that only around 5% of the population has a congenital tongue tie. While only 5% of the population seem to have a tongue tie, clinical observations indicate that anywhere between 20-50% to of the pediatric population is receiving tongue tie revision surgeries. For me, this begs the question, why the discrepancy? If only 5% of the population has a congenital tongue tie, why is 20-50% to 50 of the population getting a surgery that aims to fix this congenital anomaly? The statistical gap is too big between the facts. Something has to be driving the uptick in tongue tie revisions. While surgery is a viable option in some, it is not a one-size-fits-all solution for all cases. If 20-50% to 50 of the newborn population now has congenital tongue ties, some type of epigenetic event must have occurred to create this cataclysmic change. If this is not the case, then some other cause must be at play. More often than not, in these situations, the cause is driven by some type of monetary incentive. While I'm saying this is not the case in this situation, it would be apropos to follow the money and see where it leads. Here is another fact. A tongue tie is not the only cause of a problematic latch. Other negative influences are distortions in the skull, a vertebral subluxation, incoordination in latch mechanics, and torticollis, to name a few. A well-coordinated sequence of events must happen for a successful latch to happen. There are nine general steps of a latch. One, the jaw has to open. Two, the tongue has to drop and get out of the way. 3. The nipple has to come in. 4. The jaw closes part way. 5. The tongue comes back up. 6. The lips close and must maintain tension to keep a seal through suction. 7. The sides of the jaw have to come up. 8. The tongue has to ripple from front to back. and 9. The infant then has to perform a sucking and swallowing motion. The nerve system controls all the muscles and joints involved in the latch. All the body parts must be orchestrated in their proper balance to work effectively. Structural distortions in the body, skull, face, and cervical spine can create problems in latch potentials. All the negative factors that affect latching can be addressed in less invasive ways. The most non-invasive way to correct a vertebral subluxation and its negative effects on a latch is through a specific adjustment given by a pediatric chiropractor. Pediatric chiropractors have postgraduate training in the evaluation and assessment of infant and childhood vertebral subluxations. Correcting the vertebral subluxation better optimizes the nerve system and spine to control the muscles and joints involved in the latching movements. Thank you for listening. For even more information on how chiropractic can benefit you and your family, please check out my website, ohiospecific.com. That's O-H-I-O-S-P-E-C-I-F-I-C.com. Until next time, remember to keep your head cool, feet warm, and your mind busy.